Your latest album, The Rising Congo, uh -huh. came out last year. How successful has it been so far? It's been great. I mean, we don't really know how much it's sold or anything like that because we never pay attention to that kind of stuff. But honestly, like, we, um, we're we happy with it. <laughs> and as far as the overall sound, like, we love what Tim Lam Mises did. And we love what um, you know the way that the record actually came out and it sounded. So honestly, to us it's a success. Mm -hmm. You know, to others they can feel how they can feel about it, but we like it. We're happy with it. So sorry about it. How well has it been received by your fans? <laughs> Very well. I mean, we've noticed a growth in our fans. We've noticed a growth in industry-wise, like as far as tours. I mean, we're on this tip for ten. You know, in, in different tours that we've had an opportunity to be on because of that record. Mm -hmm. You know, we can definitely tell that people are liking it and enjoying it. And uh, it, it caters more to our, our metal fans and, and as well as our hardcore fans. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like, we've noticed a growth in fan base. So I would say it's been successful. Mm -hmm. more, more so than Pride of the Wicked and, and the, the mm -hmm. other Fire for the Team. Well, I noticed that each year you had an album come out pretty much. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's the album for this year? Um, well, actually, we're going to record a uh, our next album in November. Same <laughs> studio at Lambus Studios and stuff. Um, so that's set for November. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing this 10 for 10 uh, for the rest of this month and half of, uh, of August. And then we're going to go to Europe for September with uh, um, a couple bands, uh, Sworn Enemy and... Um, I believe it's, yeah, Earth Crisis. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be going over there with those two bands. And then um, we get, immediately when we get back, we're gonna be home for like a week and then we're gonna go and uh, record in November for the most part. I think we, we're gonna have October off writing, but then we're gonna go in November mm -hmm. and record it. Did you take more time on this album? I mean, well, with all the technology that we have now, you know, we're able to do a lot of the writing on the computer on the road, which mm -hmm. before we weren't able to do that, but now we are. So, I mean, we've taken probably more time to write the current album that we're writing right now just because we can do it on the road. Yeah. We tour so much that we can just sit there and take it with our songs and write it out and do the vocals and figure out how we want the structure of the flow of the song to be, so. You claim, you claim to be the hardest working, hardest touring band. And your roster of shows is pretty impressive. Why do you like touring so much? Um, well, we've never actually claimed to be. Other people have said that about us, which is, is great. I mean, we we just this is our job. This is what we love to do. You know, we are we we look at us. We develop more of it an entertainment business. So, I mean, if this is your job and this is your business, then you gotta work it. You gotta work hard at it. So, that's the, kind of the way we look at it. You know, it's like we gotta we have to put in the time. We have to you know work really hard at it. And, you know, hopefully someday it'll it'll pick up and we'll be able to support ourselves financially in every way. Mm -hmm. So, what's been your favorite tour so far since you've been on so many? Wow. Um, I'm sure it differs for each one of the members, but um, I would have to say the Throwdown and Soil Work tour was my favorite. Just because meeting Soil Work and, and also Throwdown, which is another hardcore band that I've been a huge fan of for a long time. Um, and finding out how awesome those dudes were. Mm -hmm. You know, where you see them on TV, you see them here and there, and you just think, oh my gosh, these guys are going to be like the biggest jerks in the world. But then you actually meet them. You know, like Soil Work, amazing dudes, you know, hung out with them most of the tour. You know, and, and just really got the bro down big time. The same thing with Throwdown. So it, it, it just, that was probably the best tour I've been on. So as far as just hanging out time. I'm sure you've played like really small places. This is a pretty small place and really huge festivals. Yeah. Which do you prefer? Well, I mean, the festivals have their pluses, you know, because there, there's so many kids. There's so many bands bringing so many of their fans. You know, it's like we're we're actually leaving this tour for one day to go play this festival on Sunshine, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's going to be like three to four thousand people watching us at that festival. You know, and for the last two years, it's about I've been watching. It's not just our fans; these are like you know all the bands that are playing that night, all their fans. So that's surreal. I mean, you go out and, and play an average show, you're not going to get three to four thousand people a night. But at these festivals, you are. So that's a plus. But then on the high side, you know, you got these smaller shows where you can grab a hold of the kids. You know, you have more of an intimate, you know, um, understanding with the kids. So they're able to, like, interact with you a lot easier than it is with a room full of, like, 4,000 people. So, you know, so they both have their perks. I like the intimacy of, like, the smaller shows. But then I like the intensity of the bigger shows, you know, larger venues. 
And speaking of a small show, you played in your hometown's mall parking lot. Yeah, yeah we did. How many people came to that show? Quite a few, actually. It was it was really interesting because we only had like one week to promote it. This this company asked us to come and play uh, for this thing called 99, and uh, it basically is 99 deaths uh, from um, like suicide and drug abuse and whatever else happened each minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they came up with this thing called 99. And uh, so they asked us to play, and we're like, sure, where are we going to play? They're like, you're going to play on the back end of a truck. And, you know, we're going to pull this flatbed truck out. You're going to play on it. And then, um, you know, that's, that's about it. Well, when are we going to promote it? Oh, we've already had posters out. Well, when are we playing? They're like, oh, you're going to play this Friday at this time. Oh, okay. So then we just started promoting it, you know, put a couple blasts out on our MySpace and stuff. And a lot of kids came out. It was a lot of fun. Very interesting. Because we've never, I mean, our our... We come from a very small town, mm -hmm. and so everybody's kind of like, what the heck is going on here? We're screaming our guts out at them. Half the people are like, yeah, War of Ages. The other half are like, who are these people? We actually played right next to two gigantic hotels, and there's people looking in the, out of the hotel windows, because I guess there was a big soccer tournament the next day. And they're like looking outside the hotel windows going, what the heck is going on? And the owner of the hotel walks out and says, what are they, they going to be doing? Because he was like ticked that we were playing. But we finished our set, they let us go, and it was cool. So that was interesting. I've heard a rumor that you're a Christian hardcore band. Yeah. I wanted we, to make sure that was true. Yeah, we are a Christian hardcore band. I mean, I, there's a lot of bands coming out, and, and uh, I think they treat it more as like, like, I'm sure people heard it like, this is church, this is church, or, you know, we're, we're here to heal or whatever else. I mean, first and foremost, the War of Ages, we're an entertainment business. You know, we believe we've been given talents and we work hard with what we have, you know, to, to help further our business. You know, we have to be very careful in how we distinguish. I mean, we're charging kids at the door, you know, we're charging them for t-shirts, but we're calling this church, you know what I mean? And we're calling this, like, this is our ministry. Like, no, this is our business. You know, we can be Christians and own any kind of business. You know, and we are who we are, we play the music we play, and that influence is what we do. You know, but the part of, I guess, our ministry, it's individually, we get off the stage, we talk to kids, we hang out. If you want to call that, that that's the Christian part of our of what we do. Up on stage is entertainment. You know, we're there to rock out as hard as we possibly can, you know, hang out with people and just, you know, be a metal band. That's what we want to do. That's our business, you know. But, I mean, a lot of people, they they get really confused by, you know, they think, oh, Christian man, oh, they're going to get up on stage and, you know, start preaching at us or throw Bibles at us or whatever else, and that's not what we're here to do, because frankly, I don't, you know, really, I disagree with that, honestly. Mm -hmm. So, we are, we're an entertainment business, but yes, we are all Christians. <laughs> See, I'm a Catholic, and I have no problem saying that, and that I like metal, too. Right. So, I didn't know if you were a Christian hardcore band or a hardcore band that just happens to be... Christians, I mean, they don't bring it in, you know, they don't really bring it in. Well, I mean, we, it, it's going to influence our music in general, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we, we, I mean, me, I write, write vocals based on my life's experiences, as I would hope any other vocalist would, mm -hmm. you know, whether they're writing about girls or they're writing about whatever, they're going to write about their experiences or partying or whatever, they're going to write about whatever they want. Mm -hmm. You know, I happen to write about my life's experiences, which happens to be with God, you know, or in a way, some, some songs I write have nothing to do with God. You know, they just have, they have to do with like, you know, changing your life and fixing yourself, you know. So, uh, it really just depends on what I'm writing and whatnot, but, I mean, musically, you, you don't, like, a Christian beat chord is no different than a, you know, a secular beat chord, you know what I mean? Metal is metal, and we just do what we do, so. Yeah, that's what I was hoping to hear, because that's refreshing to hear, you're either a Satanist, you're nothing, or you're a Christian band that does all the crazy Christian gimmick stuff, like throwing Bibles like Striper did, and then yeah. they were very hypocritical, it turns out. Right. But it's refreshing to hear that. Yeah, well, mo most Christian bands end up, I mean, it's a hard, it's a fine line, finding that, that fine line between business and your faith, you know, like a pastor. You know, I've, I've had this argument many times where like a pastor gets paid to write a sermon and he gets paid to do what he does on Sunday mornings mm -hmm. and Sunday nights. That's what he gets paid for. That's not the ministry part. The ministry part is what he does as far as being a leader. It's the part is, you know, counseling or whatever else we're talking to people, making mm -hmm. disciples. Like that's the ministry aspect, not sitting up on stage and preaching. 
That's what he gets paid to do. Yeah.